What does death mean to you? <coughs> what does death mean to you? Why to me? <laughs> what does it... <coughs> what does it mean to you? Much more important. You understand? What does life, the living, and coming to the end of it, what does it mean to you? If you believe in reincarnation, you know what that means? If you believe in reincarnation, that is, you born next life, and if you have lived rightly, correctly, happily, your next life you have a better chance to reach the higher ladder. Right? You understand? But those people who believe <coughs> in reincarnation live like ordinary other people, fighting, quarrelling, aggressive, mean, right? vicious, violent, but that belief in reincarnation has very little meaning, but is very comforting. Now, inquire into it. What is it that's going to be reborn? You understand? Suppose you believe in reincarnation, as some of you may do. I don't know why, it may be comforting, but when you begin to examine that which is to be reborn, what is that? Is it permanent soul? Permanent something that is beyond time? If it is of time, that is not permanent. Right? So, what is it that's going to be reborn? <coughs> Your tendency? Your idiosyncrasies? Your experiences? The K dies, and next life he's born again. Poor chap. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And what is that K? What is it? You, who are you? What are you? A series. Could we ask the dog to be quiet for a while? Who are you? Actually, not theoretically, play around with a lot of ideas that you are a Atman, that you are there's God in you. That's all the activity of thought, right? So, what are you? You are your experiences, right? You are what you have acquired as knowledge. You are the whole movement of memories, aren't you? Or you don't like that? Or you like to think that there is something marvellous in you? Which all that's absurd, I won't go even discuss it. The fact is, you are nothing but... I, I mustn't use nothing but, that's wrong. You are a whole series of movements of memories. Right? Examine it, please. Don't agree. Look at it. You are not, if you have no memory, 
right? If a certain operation takes place in the brain, then you lose your memories, you become a vegetable. Yes, you know. Right? The speaker has been in a hospital in California, in America, where they have done all this. I've watched it. Horrible. So, you are the tradition, the collective memories, the communal family tradition, the tradition of a country, all the memories, right? You are all that. And if you die, you want all those memories to go on? What are memories? Things that have gone, remember something that has been happy, pleasurable, or something you are longing for, right? It's all a movement of the past as memories modified and going on, right? So what does death mean? You, as an individual, coming to an end, right? Physically coming to an end. But psychologically, you say, no, that's not quite so. I am more than my body. I am more than my thought. I am more than any reaction. Right? Are you? I, I know. Tradition says you are. And you like the idea you are also, you are more than all this business. So you cling to that. And you hope the more will be born next life, in a better house, greater power, greater position, nearer God. You understand? All this is a matter of belief and thought. Right? Thought has also invented belief. Because in believing in something gives you great comfort. Right? So, if you like that kind of stuff, carry on. And millions do. Right? And those others say, well, life has been jolly good if you are successful, or life has been terrible miserable, unhappy, and I'm glad to die, right? And before dying, all the agony of illness, right? Long, prolonged years of illness, sustained by the doctors to keep the thing going. Right? This is our life. This is the way we all live. And we are frightened of death, coming to an end. Though you believe in reincarnation, but you are jolly well frightened of death. You can't carry everything with you, but you like to have it last minute. You understand? If you have a lot of money, you like to have it the last minute, though you know you can't carry it with you. So this is what we call living and dying. Right? Why do we give so much importance to the after? What happens after death? Why? Is it not far more important 
what is happening before death. You understand? You understood what I'm saying? Not what happens after, but what is happening during the long years of living, struggling, pain, anxiety, depression, suffering, loneliness, that you go all go through, right? Isn't that more important to consider whether that can, all that can be changed, all that can be ended, that rather than go on talking about what happens after death? You understand? Suppose I am attached to my family. Suppose I have no family, thank God. But suppose I'm attached to my family, my wife, my children, my house, my uh, furniture. Death comes along through accident, disease, or natural weariness. Death comes along, says, you can't take it with you. Right? You understood? I'm attached to, a, to an idea, to a belief, to a concept, to an ideal, or I'm attached to a furniture, to a house, to a family, and so on. Death means the ending of all that. Though I may believe I'll, all that I'll have next life with my brother, with my sister, you follow? Is it possible to end all that while, live, while living? Is that a concrete? You have understood what I said? While I'm living, is it possible not to be attached to a single thing? To my furniture, to my house, to my experience, to my books, to my reputation to my nonsense, you follow all that, end all that instantly. That is death. Right? Come on. What is wonderful? It is wonderful if you do it. If you don't do it, just a lot of words. So what we are saying is this. Death with the body, with all the accumulated memories, brings to an end. Unless you believe, of course, in the other. Reincarnation, you are a something which is permanent, that's going to reach which is all. All that is an invention of thought. So, is it possible to end while I'm living, while one is living, to be free entirely of all attachment? Attachment to your guru, attachment to your ideas, experience, right? So that's what death is going to do. So, while living, the ending means in living with death. You understand what I'm saying? No, no, you don't. Sir. Don't nod you. No, sir, you don't. Ending. If you end smoking, Right? If you have a habit of smoking, suppose, and you end it. Though the body demands nicotine and all that kind of stuff, end it. Because that's what's going to happen when you die. And you are clinging to some experience, to some memory. 
so that your brain is new, fresh. Clear. Not burdened with all this rubbish, garbage. Memories are garbages. I know. So live, living is to live is to live with death all the time. You understand? Do it, sir. Do one thing that you hold most precious. End that. Not, I must end it, I'm, how am I to end it, and tell me how the way to end it, or take a drug to end it. End it, because you see, death means that. <coughs> <coughs> So it is possible to live a life which means a life of freedom. And therefore a life of love. Because love is not attachment. Love is not jealousy. A mind that is Burdened with all kinds of stuff, the brain that's all kinds of problems is not capable of affection, love. So, understand, sir, the beauty of it living and the things you are attached to ending. So that, the, so that you are really understand the depth of freedom.